Let's take a look at our new Photoshop template files, what they are, what they contain, and how you can go about changing them to build something that you need. So right here we have our Photoshop template open. And what I'm going to do first is just go up to my window menu. I want to look for my layers. So if your layers aren't open, go to window and go to layers. And here they are to the right here. So if you take a look, all these individual layers are used to build this image. So I'm going to kind of deconstruct it because you don't need all these layers to change it and customize it for yours. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the image. We're going to change the type on here and make it a completely different design for a completely different thing. At the top of the screen, you're going to see what font we used. And this is the same for Photoshop Illustrator or Corel Draw, whichever one you decide to use. We're just telling you that this is the font that we used. You do not have to keep that font. You can make it any font you want. It's totally up to you. Uh, we're just telling you what we use here. So that's the one at the top. Just grab it and drag it to the trash can. Just get rid of it. It's not necessary for you. We just wanted to point something out for you. So right here, if we turn off this eyeball, notice it says that the bottom type moves away. So it says Mandeville, Louisiana. This next one, Thomas Construction. When I turn that eyeball off, we still have a Thomas Construction in here. That's just because it took us two layers with layer styles to create this look. You don't have to do two layers. You can do whatever you want again. I'll show you how to do that. I'll turn off this eyeball here. That's our image. That's our main image. Then we have lots of other things. We got If we turn off this next layer, you see the two little diamonds at the bottom in Mandeville, Louisiana. It turns on and off. We can turn off just that stripe or the outline box here. We can take the box fill out if we wanted to. Again, that's another outline and in individual layers so we can control things and do certain things, add different layer styles and effects to those. If you notice this one here, it says layer four. It's just our distressed texture. This next one, you can see this big red splotch here in the icon. If you take a look, that's our halftone dots in there. And then this is the gray or uh, beige color background, actually. We're going to make it gray. And this is the, the black background, which you don't need uh, if you don't want it. Totally, completely up to you. So let's change this thing up uh, quite a bit and see what you think. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new image, and we can use it. So we want to work with this cardinal image. So if I select it, I can hit open. This is open in its own tab and our template file is open in its own tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this tab here and drag it down. Now if I come over to my layers, you see this image has one layer, just the cardinal. So if I click it and drag it over the other window here, you can see my outlines. You can see that outline selected area. So if I just drop it, it's going to place this image inside my other document here, right? So something like this, I can just kind of roughly position it. We're going to move it around and tweak it here in a bit. So first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to turn off my construction image because this is not going to be a construction image. We'll make this one a high school. And I'm going to go start changing this thing up. This particular school that we're going to work with, the colors are gray and black, right? So if I come down here and grab this beige box, that's our kind of a distressed texture box in here. We could turn it off if we want, but what I'm going to do is I want to change it to gray. So it's selected. I'm going to show you, if you go to the image menu, come down to adjustments and go to hue saturation, you'll get this window here. What I'm looking for is the saturation slider. So if I grab this slider and pull it all the way to the left, I desaturated it completely. Now look at my color. It went to a gray. So I got rid of all the color in that layer, just that one layer, because that one layer is selected. Now, if I wanted a lighter gray, go to the lightness slider and I can do that. I can move it up, make it a lighter gray. If I wanted a darker gray, I can go down this way and do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, kind of keep it at a somewhat light gray. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to hit OK. I can turn off my black box if you don't want it in a black box. And you'll have just random rough textured edges. Now, when you do that, you see this drop shadow on this Thomas Construction uh, oval. If you come up to one of these other layers here and turn off this layer, you can find that particular one. I don't like it. I'm going to turn it off. I don't think it's necessary. And I like my red box here. That fill box is a good color because it's red, black, and gray is my team colors. But notice this one here is my outline. So if I select this layer again and do the same thing, go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and Desaturate, I just made that thing a gray as well. I can get it exact. I don't remember what my numbers were, but you can, again, you can make it lighter gray. You can make it a darker gray. It's totally up to you. 
Um, I think we're in this neighborhood somewhere. It's close enough. I'll hit OK to this. Now let's work on some type. So it says Mandeville, Louisiana at the bottom. Go up to the layer here and I click on my icon. If I double click this T, it's going to select that text. Now that text has a layer style in it and you can see the, the blended things and stuff. I kind of like those things, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to set my caps lock here and I'm going to type it. What am I going to change it to? Let's change it to Cardinals. Yeah, it's baseball season. Cardinals baseball. And now if I go click on my Thomas construction, because we want to change that text, I'm going to turn off this eyeball and we're going to work on this bottom one first. I double click this and we call this one Mandeville High Cardinals Baseball. Now, what I want you to notice is it doesn't fill this box all the way. Now, that's because we have some things that we can do in our character palette if we want to. So, if I come up here to go to Window, come down to Character, and we get this little dialog box. Now, we can make some adjustments in here. For instance, you can change the tracking. This is my tracking. And I left these little indicators in case you can read it there. So, if I click and drag inside of Photoshop, in here, first I got to double click my text. I'm going to select it. Click and drag. I can set the tracking to fill my box as much as I'd like. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to click off of the layer. So it says Mandeville High. Now that looks pretty good like it is, but if you wanted to stick with our image here and go to my next layer, notice it's, um, it looks like a different word, obviously. So uh, if I double click it, I'm going to type in Mandeville high and now I have to double click it again because I need to select it right but before I do that watch I'm gonna turn off this eyeball go back to this one this Mandeville high here and if you notice when I do that when I select this layer it tells me that my tracking is set to 140 so if I want this Mandeville high to be in the same position I have to go to my tracking and type in 140 and I'll hit enter and that moves it and positions it exactly on top of the next layer beneath it. So that's the look that we're looking for. But you know what? I think I want a little bit more white outline on here. So so if I click on my Mandeville High Layer, double click my effects icon, I can come over here to the stroke and just make it a little larger. I like that. So I just moved it up a little bit and I hit OK. I just customize that has a better a different look I think a better look for me so uh, again if I want to put my black background on I can that kind of finishes it out in my opinion it can be totally up to you I'm gonna move this um, this cardinal a little bit I'm gonna kind of push him up I don't like how he's just barely touching this corner piece I'd like to have him over extend it just a, a little bit more and I like the way his heads coming out here so that looks pretty good but I want to put him in front of the type because I think that stacking order in layers is a pretty cool thing that Photoshop allows us to do. So if I just click on my cardinal icon here and just drag it straight up to the top of all my type and let it go, look what happens. It places it right on top of the type. So you can still read it, Mandeville High, Cardinals Baseball. We have our cardinal in place. You can still read everything. The cardinal is here in position on top. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so now what, what you can do, it depends on what you're doing. If you're printing it digitally, you can run it just like it is. You can save it as a PNG, but I would recommend this. If you notice in the very bottom of our layer stack and we have a background and it's locked. If I turn off that eyeball, it gives us our transparent pixels. So this is what you want. Make sure you save a PNG for your direct -to garment digital printer or your dye sublimation printer using transparent pixels. So just turn that eyeball off and it'll completely ignore it. You can always change the color on this background layer and that will show you uh, you know what this might look like on different color shirts so for instance if it's going to be on a light gray shirt I can do that and fill a background layer so you can get a better idea that's how you work with our Photoshop templates what we're doing is we're giving you art files and letting you adjust them as you want to we're not saying hey you buy this expensive piece of software and you have to use this inside of Corel in order to get these types of looks and effects you don't we just give you a file and you can make it yours